All right, so occasionally, uh, I know you guys uh, have seen uh, either on Lighting Gallery or here on YouTube some of my homemade uh, custom fluorescent fixtures. Uh, occasionally, I will get a request to make a custom fixture from someone. I make these all by hand, so uh, it's a rather laborious and painstaking process, so I'll probably end up charging a lot more for them than you'd pay for something that you could find at a store. But that's largely because it's all handcrafted and sometimes made from vintage parts. And my good man Diesel Deucey just uh, ordered this. He wanted a fixture to run an F13 T8 lamp because he doesn't have one. And that is an oddball lamp. So I had to buy a lamp both to measure the distance of the sockets and so that I could test different ballasts to see what would run it optimally. There was a 1420 troke that underdrove most of the lamps it was rated for, but drove the F13 T8 at 15 watts. And I had a bunch of other chokes of that same brand. It was a GE, and most of them ran that ran it at a 18 watts. Don't know why that particular one underdrove it, but that's the one I ended up using. The other one I also thought about using was this F8 T5 choke, which overdrove most of the lamps it was rated for, and it could start the F13 T8 just fine, but it got a little bit hot. It ran it at about 11 or 12 watts. So I suspect that the part of the reason it got hot was because it was not encased in mounting feet or a clamped housing, and it's not tar potted either, but it could also be because it's using a lamp it's not rated for. I almost threw this one in there. Most of the T5 chokes I tried it with wouldn't start it at all, and one of them would only start it after like two minutes of blinking. So, the starter socket hole, I originally drilled a hole, but it was slightly misaligned from the lamp holder, so the starter didn't go in, so I had to cut it out with the jeweler's coping saw and make it arch-shaped. And the end plates are part of the ballast cover, it's all part of the same piece of metal that makes things a little easier. And this is the lamp I bought off of eBay. It set me back about $8 if you factor in the shipping. And of course these are black lamp holders. They're actually newer ones, but they're replicas. They're the exact same model that you can find. They're made by Leviton. I have an older version of those somewhere. I thought I did. Seems to have eluded my grasp at the moment. Oh well. They're a little bit thinner than the old ones, but otherwise they're identical. And on the off chance that it's needed, these can still be found. They still make them. On the other end, there's a pull chain switch and a cord. I had to drill the holes, and I had a scare there because it flung, the drill press grabbed and flung the ballast cover while the lamp holders are still in it. I was very lucky that nothing broke. But we eventually got this done, and the, this is the typical uh, cloth extension that comes with these pull chain switches. It can be lengthened by pulling on the ends of the bow. I don't know whether or not the switch has been left on, but we'll start it up a few times. Apparently it has. And of course there are hooks in the back, which are removable and the screws which hold on the ballast cover they had to be propped up with some nuts so that the little screw pegs didn't go too deep if I ever make another one of these another fixture for this type of lamp again I'm gonna have to test a bunch of ballasts on one of the lamps because most 1420 chokes overdrive it most T5 chokes underdrive it. Anyways, another startup. And you can see, uh, I autographed the end plate here with the screwdriver, and I also put an autograph on this side here. I might redo, I might go over that again with a Sharpie, but uh, I think that works for now. I get a good amount of blinkage 
with these properly rated chokes. It's not the most blink happy thing in the world, but given the lamp size, it works. So if you ever want to make a fixture for one of these lamps and you want to make it preheat, you got to test a number of different preheat chokes, both some 1420s and some F8T5s and some for 9 watt CFLs. Because you want to look for either a 1420 choke that underdrives lamps significantly, but will work perfectly on this one, or an F8T5 choke or a 9 watt CFL choke that overdrives lamps. Both of those will be in the right ballpark for this. By the way, the hooks are removable. All you need is a socket set and a pair of pliers and you're good to go. Ooh, that was a good one. All right, one more. All right. That is it now. To get this thing packed, uh, because this lamp holder is blocked by the pull chain switch. Getting it in and out of there is a bit of a pain. And I was going to originally take the lamp holders off and stuff them in the chassis. But uh, the chassis, I mispronounced that, the chassis, and uh, do it that way so that they could be reattached after they arrived at Diesel Doozy's place. But since it's so annoying to get that lamp holder in and out, I'm gonna have to find a way to ship this and protect these lamp holders and hope that they don't break during shipping. I mean, even if the worst comes to worst, you can buy new lamp holders identical to these. They still make them. But, they're a bit pricey since they're vintage replicas. And, they're also hard to find unless you go to the right place. Now, I will unplug it. I had to cannibalize this cord off of something else, too. But that's another story. Take that lamp off and I'll uh, undo these wing nuts just to get a brief little view of the inside. And these uh, screws that hold in the ballast are knurled on the sides and have no screw threads. They're meant to hold in diffusers. That's right, the end plates and the ballast channel cover are the same piece of metal. And that is so that I can have everything isolated on the same piece of metal without having to worry about wires holding them together putting strain on it if they're separate this is the inside these long screws attach the uh, wing nuts and the shorter screws are actually the hooks to get those off all you need is a socket set and some pliers so getting it back on is a little Takes a little bit of practice. You gotta align it so that both of the screw pegs come out of the holes. And oftentimes this will only work on one orientation. Gotta make sure I'm not closing it on a wire either, because that, that would not be good. Now, I think we got it. that one the screw on the other end occasionally rotates as well so sometimes you gotta screw the nut that's inside the fixture down a little bit or hold a screwdriver to it either of those work obviously I'm not gonna ship this with the lamp in the lamp holders because that's just asking for it to break we don't want that but as long as I've Still filming, we'll show one more startup, just for good measure. Alright, that is it. Enjoy.